the team behind the Acon system range of stuff, including me, started wanting to make something better. Um, so internally, a lot of our projects were codenamed with various bits of atoms. Um, so the Acon Proton was going to be something that was a professional version, <laughs> as it were, of a, an atom. Um, take out all the mistakes, add in all the stuff that was missing, um, which, which is basically taking a lot of facilities from the system range and pushing it into the same class of machine as the atom. So we got an awful long way along how we would design such a thing and what sort of thing it would be. And there were a lot of arguments, um, structured discussions, let's say, um, where people uh, wanted different things. So Herman early on wanted something that was focused on office automation, and that was a theme throughout the next five or six years for him. Um, Andy Hopper, director of Acorn, now treasurer of the Royal Society and a leading light in Cambridge Computer Lab, um, he wanted a scientific sort of computer. Chris Curry obviously wanted another home computer like the Atom, um, Steve and I wanted something that we would individually like, um, something that would hit whatever, whatever spot we wanted, um, the sort of computer that we would want for ourselves. And there was no agreement early on about what this was. You know, uh, that spans an enormous range of things, um, many of which would be unaffordable. Um, I came up with the idea that whatever we did, would have to be decomposable into sections. So um, that, that was a sort of logjam breaking idea and we could get agreement. So we'd have an IO processor and we'd have different language processors, one for Herman to be an office machine, one for Andy to be um, a scientific machine and the IO processor by itself could be the home computer. So, We'd got that far in our discussions um, of what a proton would be. Meanwhile, as he said in the introduction, Chris Curry had discovered that the BBC wanted a home computer. Um, and it rapidly became more than that in that Chris said we had a prototype of the proton and the BBC should come and see it, which we didn't, not even vaguely. So that, that, that was the beginnings of some rather frantic times, which is not to say that being in a startup like CPU Limited isn't rather frantic anyway. You work enormous amounts of hours and lots of things keep happening. Acorn was, was selling the Atom, which is a, a, a small um, single box machine, um, and, and, and that has sold quite successfully, initially in kit form and then as a, as a finished product. And uh, a few of us were beginning to think about what would follow from that. So what would the next Acorn product look like? And we, we had this concept, which was called the Proton. Um, and, and the idea of the Proton was we were going to use a 6502, as in the Atom, for a front-end processor. Uh, but then maybe use one of the, one of the sort of more powerful 16-bit processors um, as a sort of uh, to do to do the real number crunching. So we had this kind of concept in our heads, um, and, and that had been running for a few months, um, playing with those ideas. Uh, then, of course, Chris Curry um, got wind of the BBC's interest in in, in getting a number of companies to bid. Um, to construct a machine for this series of TV programmes. And uh, the first uh, I really knew about it was 
when I was telephoned the weekend um, at the start of this infamous week um, by Herman, who played his telephone game between Sophie and myself. Well, we were very excited to hear that the BBC wants to, wanted to do something and microprocessors and, of course, Chris and, and I were very worried that Clive would get it. So we, were, we got, uh, Clive Sinclair uh, would get it. So we got very active and Chris uh, really was, uh, was brilliant at uh, uh, contacting the BBC and uh, convincing them that uh, uh, we were the right company uh, to go with. Uh, and uh, uh, I then got the team together with uh, Sophie Wilson and uh, Steve Ferber uh, to produce a prototype in three days uh, after the BBC came to see us and uh, uh, that uh, convinced them that we were a good company to work with.